number of mm -hmm. U.S. troops mm -hmm. this week. Mm -hmm. But when Tet happened and it was a coordinated attack up and down the country, mm -hmm. the public got the feeling from the, mm -hmm. the people in the press that, you know, it was a losing cause. Sure. Okay. And whether it was a losing cause or not, I think only history will ever tell that. Mm -hmm. But I felt really bad because when we left, it's like we abandoned everything. Mm -hmm. You know, we went in to do a job and we didn't finish it. When we came back, nobody wanted to hang around the U.S. Mm -hmm. In fact, when I came back and I was asked where would I want to go for my next assignment, I could stay in Vietnam again. I said, no, thank you. Mm -hmm. I could go to Korea, go to Japan, mm -hmm. go to other places in Asia. Mm -hmm. I could go to Europe. Mm -hmm. I could come back to the States. Mm -hmm. I asked for, and I learned that if you ask for your second choice, you ask, they give you two choices. You ask for one and two. If you ask for the second choice, that's the one they usually give you. So I asked for Germany first, and I asked for Africa second. They gave me Africa. And I ended up in Africa, the other side of the world, far, far away mm -hmm. from Vietnam. Hmm. Okay. All right. Let me just stay in Vietnam just for a little bit. Um, did you did you have ever have any R&R? &R? Did you? Oh, yes. Okay. I had R&R, and, &R and I went to Tokyo, Japan. Oh, okay. I think it was it was a week or two weeks. I'm not quite. I don't remember that okay. far back, but okay. I do remember how nice it was to be in civilization, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and and people weren't shooting at you, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it was just such a, a culture shock. But it was a good culture shock because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I learned, you know, how interesting the Japanese culture mm -hmm. is. Mm -hmm. uh, the food, the the transportation, the the technology. Even then, was mm -hmm. it was advanced, and the people. Uh, were very friendly. Mm -hmm. I even went to a movie in the downtown area of the Ginza, mm -hmm. and the most interesting thing was the movie was in English with Japanese subtitles. It was a James Bond movie called You Only Live Twice. Oh. And scenes in the movie when people in the, in the audience, I was probably the only white boy mm -hmm. there, mm -hmm. when people were laughing and pointing at things, I was looking at the screen and I was realizing just outside the movie theater doors was where the filming took place mm -hmm. on that movie. Many mm -hmm. of the scenes from that movie were filmed right outside in the area mm -hmm. where the movie house oh. was. Oh, okay. And so uh, well, it, that it, was an interesting experience. You only lived twice. You only lived twice. Yeah. A James Bond movie in 1967, I guess, yeah. or 68. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and how did you get to Tokyo? What do you mean from? We flew, we flew Pan American Airlines from, I think, I had to fly from um, Fubai on a C-130 troop carrier to Da Nang, and we oh, took okay. off from Da Nang okay. and flew nonstop to Tokyo. Okay. Did you take the same route back? Same route, yeah, from okay. Tokyo back to Da Nang. Okay. And did it, how long did it take you to get adjusted back to Fubai? <laughs> to, 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 about 10 minutes. 10 minutes. So this about is 10 back minutes, to yeah. the real world. Back to the war again, yep, okay. okay. Now I just got to count the days down until it's time to leave. Okay. Did, did your unit, well, your class on this, I'm going to stick with your class, mm -hmm. did you, did they, uh, did you have any casualties or lose no. your, your unit? No, we were very fortunate. No, oh, we did okay. not have any casualties. We came uh, close, but uh, we did not have any casualties. Okay. Okay. And obviously you were part of the Signal Corps. Um, well, Signal Corps is, is a different part of the Army. We were, we were the Army Security Agency. Oh, we all oh. held top secret crypto security oh, clearances. Okay. And okay. we were behind the barbed wire and the, and the, and the 40,000 landmines because... Yeah. They didn't want anybody coming near what we were doing. Sure, I got you. Okay. okay. And we weren't supposed to talk about what we did, mm -hmm. and now it's 40 years later. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. over. Right, right. Okay. All right. Um, and how long were you in Vietnam? Approximately 13 months. 13 months. Okay. Uh, before we um, head to, to Africa, uh, what, what stands out uh, relative to your... 13 months uh, in Vietnam that sort of, you know, still sticks in your mind, per se, you know? The first night of the Tet Offensive, oh. when the sky lit up, mm -hmm. when the bombs and the rockets and the mortars were coming at us instead mm -hmm. of away from us, um, being so scared, I thought I was never going to make it, mm -hmm. and um, it was uh, traumatic, right. I guess, right. some way to say it was traumatic. Okay. But then, from that point on, we worked non-stop, without any breaks, for about four and a half months. Every single day, everybody worked their shift and then some. Mm -hmm. There were no days off. It was just mm -hmm. every single day for almost four months wow. Wow. with no 